This is a flip through of Exploring Creation with Mathematics Level 1. Level 1 corresponds with a traditional first grade year of mathematics. Most families do one level in one year. If you're interested in this program, you're going to need to purchase two books. There's a spiral bound student book that has all the activities, lessons, and practice pages. They write right in this book. And the teaching guide answer key, which has notes for you, the parent, on how to teach the mathematics, ways to extend things or simplify things if your child's struggling. It has a suggested pacing guide. And in the back, it has tear out pages for all the activities, game boards, etc. Uh, you will use several common household items in the activities in this book, and we've provided a complete list for you that you can look at to make sure you have those items. But there are a few things that are sort of math specific that I want to show you that you will need to purchase. So you need linking cubes. These are just cubes that snap together. You will need base 10 blocks. Base 10 blocks are a set of blocks that help represent place value. So this is the thousand cube. This is the 100 flat, and then these green rods represent 10, and these yellow unit cubes represent one unit. Additionally, you'll need 3D shapes. Now, you can buy a math-specific set of 3D shapes like this one. These are super fun. But if you have wooden blocks or small 3D shapes around the house, you can also just use those. Finally, you'll want pattern blocks. My set came with this magnetic board that has been helpful for us in not losing them, but you don't need the magnetic board. You just need a set of these blocks. You also will want addition and subtraction flashcards. You can make those yourself, but personally, I've found that it saves a lot of time to just grab them and they're not that expensive. You want addition and subtraction within 20. That's what you'll be reviewing during this level. Exploring creation with mathematics follows the concrete pictorial abstract approach. So your kids will be learning concepts hands-on first, then they'll work with pictures of those uh, concepts, and finally they'll move into the abstract world of mathematics with numerals and symbols. This program is a blend of mastery and spiral. Chapters focus on one topic, like addition or 3D shapes, and build to mastery within that chapter. But there's also a spiraling skills practice review where kids are taking five to 10 minutes every day to review a previously learned skill. So this book has everything that you, the parent, need. When you open it up, one of the first tools we've given you is a suggested pacing guide. There are 102 lessons in this level, and so it will take you 28 weeks if you follow a four-day week. We've laid out for you exactly what you need to do each day. There'll be a specific lesson assigned for that day, and then a skills practice. The skills practice is that spiraling review, and this is explained in detail later in this book. After you flip through the pacing guide, there's an explanation of sort of the philosophy and the components of the course. This is an overview of the whole skills practice for the year. Each unit starts with a list of the supplies that you need for that unit. And then there are answers to every single lesson right on the thumbnails with notes for every single lesson. The beginning of a unit, there's also an overview of that skills practice. So for unit two, the skills practice is addition facts. And so there'll be a specific description of that skill. And often that skill is broken into smaller chunks. So here kids are doing addition facts up to five. Then they're doing the ones that make 10. And finally, they're doing the ones that make six, seven, eight, and nine. For each one of those smaller skills, there's lots of different ways you can practice playing games, printing worksheets off the Book Extras website, or just using flashcards. The back of this teaching guide has all the tear out pages that you need for the activities. So those start back here when you get to the end of the answers. And so these are pages that you tear out and use for the activities that are in the student book. There's game boards different types of reference sheets. It's all back here. The last page of this book is a complete supply list of everything that you need for the entire year. And this is also available online if you want to look at it before you purchase the program. So let's take a look at the student book. So your student is going to work through this cover to cover. 
If we look at the table of contents, the first unit is introduction to addition. A lot of the first unit is a review of kindergarten skills, so it's a nice gentle entry. Then we have addition and subtraction, place value for unit three, measurement and data for unit four, and finally we end with geometry. Let me show you how a unit is structured. We'll just flip through unit one. So every unit starts with a short devotional that connects the mathematics in that unit to God and shows kids that how all things in creation point to the creator. These were really fun to write, and I find they really just center you before you jump into the mathematics. Here's the reference to the skills practice for that unit, so you know to be working on this five to ten minutes a day. So we're starting with numbers. You'll notice a mix of concrete, pictorial, and abstract as kids are learning how to work with numbers, how to add on, and it's just gently increasing in difficulty. Then they get into addition. Just skipping ahead a little bit here. Adding in different orders. Now they're working with different families, like how to add to make five. Here's a coloring page for review. It's super colorful, engaging. We want kids flipping ahead, curious about what's coming next in their book. When you get to the end of a unit, there's always a project. The project for this unit is to make a number book. These pages are in the back of the answer key. Kids fill in different examples of a number, and then they make a little book to show off their knowledge from that unit. I want to show you a typical lesson. They all follow the same uh, format. Let's just jump ahead a little bit so you can see what's coming. This is about halfway through the year. They start with an activity called How Many Are Hiding, where uh, you have to guess how many beans are under the cup. This leads right into the lesson, which is about how addition and subtraction are related. And then they have two practice pages. That is the typical flow of a lesson an activity or some type of play, learn, and then practice. Finally, let me show you a little bit of the measurement and data unit, just so you get a nice flavor of this book. So measurement and data happens in unit four. We start with a short devotional about measurement and Noah's art. Then we have the content here. So much fun, hands-on, creative ways to do measurement. It really helps kids learn, but it really engages them as well. When they get to the end of this unit, they are going to do a science-related project. So every level of apology of math has some type of science connection. Astronomy is the connection for this level. And we're talking to them about how weather affects rocket launches. And then they read about weather. And they're going to graph and compare weather patterns and just really synthesize that knowledge. You can find um, more information on this level on the Apologia website.